Yum, yum! Hey guys, Ryan Ernst with Pixel Fondue here. Today we're going to be going over the basics of render booleans. We're going to show how to do a basic cutaway, then we're going to show how to exclude items from your cutaway, and last but not least, we'll throw in a little bit of animation. Let's get started. All right, guys, so we're inside Modo, and I've got a CAD file from my client. It's broken down into lots of nice little parts. Uh, but it is very heavy, so I've made it into a static mesh, and all of the parts inside of it is a static mesh. But I've set those to render on, or render yes, uh, so I can go ahead and turn it off and turn on my proxy that I've made. It's just something in my scene that's not heavy, so I can fly around my scene easier, um, and I can still see where my general geometry is. Now, you could go and break this down and show the chains and that sort of stuff, but for this, I don't think it's necessary. So the first thing that you need to do is go up to Add Item. And you can either search if you're in 10.2 or higher, or if you're not, you can go to Volumes and then Render Boolean. And you can see when it comes in, it just comes in as a sphere. All right, so this is what our Render Boolean looks like when it's uh, rendering with the cat item in the scene, and it's a giant sphere. It's just cutting directly in half anything that's in its way. Let's grab that, that Render Boolean, and let's change it to a cube. Now if you don't want to use one of the basic ones that comes in the particle geometry here, sphere, cube, cylinder, or cumulus, what you can do instead is use a surface. So I'm going to select my donut surface. And when I turn on that mesh, you'll see it cuts it out. Now you can make that whatever you want, but the heavier it is, the harder it's going to be to render, I believe. So I'm going to turn this one off, and I'm going to turn off my render boolean that I dropped in, and I'm going to turn on my final render boolean that I use for the animation. It's a cube that I've then just stretched out uh, and scaled unproportionally to make the rectangle that I wanted. And we want to make sure that our pipes and our fan are showing through this. So for each item that you want excluded from your render, make sure that that item has its own exclusive material. So my fan plastic here has its own material, and I'm going to go down to the material rays inside the material properties and turn off enable surface clipping. That allows my fan to come straight through the render boolean. So now I need to do the same thing for the copper piping. Go to material rays and turn off enable surface clipping. All right, so when you're looking at your preview and you've got your items excluded and you've got your boolean cut out, you might want to add a special color or material to the cutout. Uh, as you can see on here, I've got it set to my client's red color. And the easiest way to do that, if you're only using one boolean, is to just drop a color or a constant in over your base material, because that's what it's using by default, it's just your base material. Um, so you can see here I've just got a color swatch of my client's red dropped right over the base material. But if you're trying to do more than one render boolean and you want different colors, what you'll need to do is you'll need to right click your render boolean, go down to shade, and create item mask. So now each render boolean that you do that for will have its own material. Let's set this to hot pink and see the preview. So you might be thinking to yourself, well Ryan, what if I just want the regular shader applied to my cutout? Well that's super easy, you just go up to your render boolean and you turn off local shader. So I like mine with the colored outline, so I'm going to turn on local shader. And I'm going to get rid of my render boolean material. And that should default me back to red. Alright, let's get this animated. Set a keyframe for my scale and my movement at the 480 frame mark. And then around 190, I'm going to set it again. So then at the one or at the, the zero frame marker, I'm going to set my scale to 1% and set my keyframe. And there you go. If we preview that, you'll see it grows and cuts into our uh, mesh. Render that out, and you'll get something like this. All right, guys, I'm excited to see what you do with this, so please share your work on social media using the hashtag PixelFondue. I'd love to see it. Yum, yum!